So, es ist keine Rede, sondern nur eine kleine Ankündigung. Es ist tatsächlich, es sind zehn Tage vergangen, Schloss Mediale neigt sich dem Ende zu. Das kann ich selber gar nicht fassen. Ich bedanke mich nochmal ganz herzlich bei diesem wunderbaren Team, was das hier möglich gemacht hat. Jetzt geht es noch einmal weiter und ähm, nach der Mediale ist vor der Mediale. Good evening, everyone. Everything is fine here? Yes. <laughs> We are very, very happy to be here and um, at this marvelous festival and uh, making the last event of this year's editions festival. Um, the, const the pieces that we are going to play for you next uh, 20 minutes, half an hour, will uh, be very much improvised. Um, improvisation is a very important part of uh, our musical traditions. Uh, so we decided about some structures and we are uh, going to have fun and to listen to each other and to uh, create some music together for you on the moment here. So um, have a good journey with us and uh, see you later. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. We will play another short piece just to say goodbye. And uh, just before playing the new piece, the, the other piece, I want to just say a few words about instruments. Maybe you ask yourself what, which instruments these are. Uh, so uh, Reza is playing this um, fiddle called Qaychak. Qaychak, uh, uh, as I say, it's a kind of the fiddle uh, from Persia, from more specifically from south east of Persia, a region called Baluchistan. Uh, this is an instrument that we also find in other uh, neighbor countries, such as Pakistan and north of India. And uh, also, the, it's a very old instrument that traveled to, to Europe during the Middle Ages and uh, became uh, also the, the fiddle that we have uh, in many uh, European musical cultures and countries. Um, the instrument that I play is called the setar. It's also another Persian instrument. Uh, this one is uh, an instrument dedicated to playing the classical Persian music. And, um, well, it's also a very, very old instrument. There is uh, some uh, statues from more than 3,000 years ago with the musicians playing exactly this instrument. Uh, originally, this instrument had three strings. That's where the name comes from. Se in Persian means three. Yek do se. And tar means string. So uh, setar means literally three strings. Um, so the instrument al always had three strings. And if you look well in my instrument, it has four. But I still call it setar uh, because actually the, the fourth core was added like 150 years ago uh, to double the third one. So I still have three strings, but the third one is doubled. So uh, you can count it, you can look at it from different angles, but uh, I call it still setar, three strings instrument. And uh, so this instrument is from Persia. Uh, maybe more you're more familiar with uh, the Indian sitar, which is also, um, which comes from actually this uh, little Persian setar. Uh, lots of musicians and artists went to North Indian court uh, during the uh, 16th century. And uh, they brought with them uh, some instruments, and beside them, this setar. And they for sure adapted to their own musical cultures by uh, changing the number of strings and uh, changing the shape of the instrument, adding some other bodies here, and became the Indian sitar that uh, we know today. Uh, but this one is a Persian one, and I pluck the strings with my nail. There is one finger doing uh, all the work to pluck the, the strings. Uh, the instrument that Didem plays is called the kanun. So it's a fantastic instrument. Uh, kanun in, uh, well, it's, it has its, the, the word kanun has roots in Greek, uh, meaning the law, the, uh, the rule. And uh, because of the dif different divisions and different length of strings, um, the, the mathematicians and theoreticians of, of music were uh, dividing the intervals of the music. So the kanun uh, was always the, 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 the ruler of instruments because it gives the diff different notes and different divisions of every um, string. So it has, uh, this one has 72 strings and um, the, this, the instrument that uh, Didem plays comes from uh, Turkey. Uh, but this is an instrument that we, we find very often in different musical cultures. In Turkey, in all Mediterranean countries, in many, many Middle Eastern countries, in all Arabic cult musical culture, Persian culture, uh, even Central Asia. And um, the strings are tripled. Here, in uh, some of those are doubled, but mainly tripled. Uh, so three strings tune the same note. And uh, she has a very fantastic system here. Um, so when she tunes the strings, when she's playing, she can change the intonation of each string by those small mechanics that, is, that uh, these are installed on the instrument, called mandal. And uh, she can uh, play, uh, she can change um, interval to, to half tone higher, half tone lower, and subdivide 
sometimes to nine or twelve semitones, so micro, micro, microtones. So this is a fantastic instrument with lots of possibility. Um, yeah, and she plays uh, with uh, those picks that uh, replace the, the, the nail. Um, yeah. And uh, Sean is playing uh, tablas, so a very typical uh, percussion from North Indian musical culture. And uh, yeah, so maybe you want to say a few words about your instrument? Well, <coughs> you can see uh, it's different from a lot of other drums playing with the uh, fingers, not with sticks and not even with the whole hand. So each sound has a very particular uh, placement of the fingers. So just from two drums, you can hear so many different uh, sounds are possible. Uh, the right hand drum is tuned to a note. So that's why you see me with the hammer all the time tuning. There's not that many drums that are tuned to specific pitches. And on the left hand, I have about an octave range by uh, applying pressure with my uh, left wrist. Uh, Oh, yeah. 
در هوایت بیقراره روز شد سرز پایت بر ندار روز شد روز شب را همچه خود روز شب را همچه خود مجنون کنم روز شب را نی گذارم روز شب very much.
Thank you.